Welcome to this uh, summary of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu programming. Um, this is what me and Tor came up with for Mario and Tai based on competition set in the future, and um, specifically the European sort of comp in January. Just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into maybe the background of uh, coming up with some ideas, designing a program, some of the whys and the what's really, because I think a lot of people focus on just exercises, um, but not really going into the um, the depth of why these sorts of program and things and some of the mistakes that sort of happen along the way because we all make mistakes and this isn't the perfect program. So I'm going to try and make it as brief as I can. Quick summary, dive into some of the whys and what to and we'll get started. So the outline first is going to be we worked our way backwards from January. So me and Tor decided to go from the European comp in Jan and decide where we want sort of tie to beer uh, at that time and maybe Mario if he, if he was going to compete. Um, so we set our sights on the one in January, worked our way December. That gave us two months there to work on certain things, which you'll talk about. Going through November to October and eventually September and August where we started at. So that's the brief sort of outline of working sort of backwards from that. It gives us a little bit of idea of what we can actually program the time limit, what we've got to work with. So it's a solid sort of five, six months there. We can build a pretty solid baseline. So it was really good to get started in that sense. Yeah. We dive into a couple of the things wrote down here. Um, August to September is where we started. So what we actually look to do there is build basically a, a solid foundation of strength work. Um, I think it was might have been Louis Simmons who said that, but you're only as big as your base. So what he means by that is the base of your pyramid, you can only sort of build on top of that. You need to widen it before you grow anymore. So if you've got a sort of um, general strength base and it's quite wide and you're fairly strong in general conditioning, you can build on that when you get towards the sort of specific end of that. So you wanted to try and build as wide a base as possible with that strength work. So we've got strength work, uh, general conditioning, some accessory for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But that'll be single leg work, uh, single arm work, um, hip work for like hip escapes, uh, sort of basic support work. Um, and then especially movement and mobility. Jiu-Jitsu is all about movement and um, getting into uh, the good, better positions to perform sort of uh, takedowns, uh, submissions, uh, sweeps. So you need to be fairly mobile in a sense. So I think performance and mobility movements, but also just performing the sport as well. The tough ask for jiu-jitsu is uh, the athlete to um, compete and perform jiu-jitsu as a sport. You're generally rolling and working on the skills up to seven, seven days a week. So finding time to fit all of this stuff in, you need to sort of um, communicate with the athletes and they need to let you know when they're feeling sort of not the best, when they've had a hard sort of roll. Similar to like your MMA and boxing, if someone's got a hard spar in the morning, you generally don't want to give them sort of hard strength strength training and hard conditioning in sort of the evening or the night because their sort of central nervous system, their body is going to probably react to that bad in terms of stresses and they're not going to be able to perform to the best of their abilities the next day. So a lot of communication going on there, which we'll talk about. Moving from the base, baseline strength, which we worked on for a solid two months, and um, moving on to October, November, where we're currently at. So obviously with the lockdown, we've sort of, some of the plans have been knocked on the head. And um, this is where we wanted to build, if you're not sort of familiar with the force velocity curve, you're working from maximal strength all the way up to basically as fast as possible. So let's take you from a, a one rep max squat for maximal strength, all the way to um, like a sprint, if you would say. They're the different types of forces, but you need to develop alongside that curve to develop an overall athlete in like power, uh, strength, um, all the good stuff that makes an overall good athlete along with the sport. So once you build that solid baseline, we were then moving over to sort of strength speed on that continuum. So where we move sort of heavy loads to build that solid structure, solid baseline. Now we're moving over to a point where we can actually move them heavy loads quickly. So introducing to moving heavy loads quickly, maybe specific conditioning. So some rolling, some sort of 
excuse me, sort of flows. Um, and then accessory, keep them in there, uh, 100%. That sort of stays in the background throughout. When we talk about accessory, these could be things like work and sort of grip strength, uh, sort of overhead shoulder work, hip work. So simple ones that we took from for like warm-ups where um, wait, uh, waiters walks overhead, uh, bottoms up walks to work on like that forearm, uh, shoulder, scapular stability, hangs from the bar, just grip strength and obviously overall shoulder health. Um, so that was like the overall background with that. Just moving into the final pieces, December and January. So this is where the competition is pretty close. So we've done basically all the groundwork here. What we don't want to do now is keep loading the athletes to a point where they're quite exhausted because they're going to be tired doing all the strength work and all the sort of heavy loads quickly. That's on top of their sport and this and conditioning and just sort of general life. That's a lot of stress on the body. So towards the comp, we don't want to really be going towards that because we built a baseline. You might want to keep it in the background, but we still want to build on that again. So we don't want to lose it, but we definitely don't want to make it worse throughout the comp because the main focus there is the competition. So we've got as good as we can get there. So when we get to December and January, we reversed it and gone from sort of strength speed here and moved to speed strength. Now this is where you move them really, really light to moderate roads as fast as possible. This is where like your top end plyometrics might come in, like your, uh, your depth jumps, your um, med ball sort of throws, uh, chest passes, uh, landmine throws, etc. Um, but it's something that we've included just to teach the athletes and explain why. Just going from that outline, moving towards maybe our exercise pools and what we actually done throughout the program. So um, auto regulation is a big one. And the reason we uh, mention it is because we just sort of talked about it then where the athletes spend a lot of time in their sport. Their sport is jujitsu. The sport is not sort of lifting weights. But we know that lifting weights can have a massive carryover into sort of overall structural strength and um, mitigating injury and um, maybe even increasing performance in terms of power. So we need to work with the athletes. So whatever's on the board and whatever we program, that might need to change on that day. So it's always good to sort of have like a plan B, even a plan C. So we kept it as simple as possible. Um, we stayed in sort of that five rep range and we just built it in terms of progressive overload. So week one, technical heavy. I mean, we were sort of going with reps in reserve. You don't know what reps in reserve are. It's basically if I say rep in reserve um, one, then that might mean one to two reps left in the tank. So that might be a pretty challenging effort because Mario and Ty were pretty, not new to this, but new to some of the movements. We started them at the bottom and um, the bottom of the chain because anything's going to work when we're talking about that. So we started with three sets of five, week two, four sets of five, week three, five sets of five. That definitely changed though, because what we found is um, sometimes it went okay it's actually just increased the weight because maybe on the tuesday or the thursday which are the days that they were in they had a hard roll in the morning and they weren't really feeling up to moving the heavy loads so that's where the feedback and the communication comes in and this is where auto regulation comes in auto regulation is just based on feedback of the athletes and you're going to manipulate maybe the intensity and um, the volume based on that day what you've already uh, set out so just make sure you've got sort of a plan b or a plan C to sort of work off because you might not always be able to perform what you set out to perform. And um, so reps and reserve there for all of the movements that we're going to talk about for the exercise bill. So this was a simple day one where we paired two movements. The reason we paired two movements because it's just time efficient and we wanted to actually get some more work in terms of accessory. And also it keeps it a little bit more exciting rather than just focus on one for the full hour. So we got on day one, we made trap bar deadlift and landmine press. The reason we set it out because you know trap bar deadlift is probably going to take the, the gist of the load. That's going to be a fairly heavy movement. Okay, the landmine press, that's going to be fairly heavy, but you can still move a fairly good load um, compared to if we put, say, a back squat in there. A squat and a deadlift, 
generally don't really go well together because they're two sort of top of the chain movements. You can move some serious load. So to perform them two on the same day would be very, very fatiguing. So we've got sort of a lower body movement there and then an upper body movement compared to uh, sort of next to it. As you can see, we've progressed them towards um, throughout the continuum. So we've used this from August to January. So we started with trap bar deadlift for sort of strength in this area, just to build that baseline. We moved to trap bar, maybe heavy jumps, um, and then eventually moving to trap bar jumps with light sort of load, or even just remove the trap bar and do some just normal jumps. So that's something we'll talk about in a minute in terms of development with sort of jumps and landing and plyometrics. Um, landmine, you put landmine in there. Um, so the reason we put trap bar in there is because it's simple to teach um, based on all sort of the needs analysis on like injuries and um, sort of mishaps with maybe movements and old injuries just flaring up. It was the easiest movement to get the most bang for your buck. So trap bar deadlift, putting force into the ground to lift weight up, transfer over to things like uh, throws on the mats, hip escapes, etc. in the sport. So definitely good movement where we can see a, a large amount of load moved. Landman press was added in there just for the sake of shoulder mobility. Um, Mario quite suffered with going overhead, so he's getting that actually dealt with working with a physio. So we thought the best way to get him pressing would be to use a landman because he can actually work through that range of motion without pain. Um, Ty was also the same. Um, eventually we might get to a point where we can all better press anyway because it's always good <clears throat> excuse me, to um, not focus on just one movement and try and get the full range of motion at the shoulder, at the shoulder blade. Um, Landman press is a great movement but so is also overhead press. You've actually got the full range of motion you can work to develop that. So again we've moved towards the continuum all along this continuum. Push press or heavy loads for the um, strength speed work, and eventually we're going for um again push press or throws where it's light and moderate loads moving very very fast towards the back end of the competition where we don't want to fatigue the athletes too much towards it. So that was day one on a Tuesday. Moving into day two, again we've gone opposite of press and we've gone for some pulling movements. Pen lay roll is probably a solid movement in there because. It's one that can transfer over again to your sport of jiu-jitsu where it might spend, excuse me, it depends what your game is. So if you if you like to um, sort of pull guard, you've got to have some sort of strength of pulling um, uh, the opponent into it and sort of holding guard there. So pen lay rows, great exercise to develop that upper back to mid to upper back strength and that pulling strength. Um, Again, we've moved along the continuum. It was a simple setup to teach, nothing too crazy. As you can see with most of these movements, because Mario and Ty's sort of training history with Jiu Jitsu is like very, very top end. But in the weight room, it doesn't really match it. So we had to start them at the base. And these were the simplest exercise to teach to try and get um, quite progressing early. So pen lay rows, again, we moved along the continuum. Uh, pen lay rows for the strength structure from august to september from october to november for like strength speed this would maybe add a sort of band or change that way they actually really th uh, think about moving them heavy loads fast and eventually we got to a point where we were doing sort of um banded pen lay rows where we we're moving for speed okay so this is a nice transition because it's quite hard to find a, a puller movement that you can move for speed um, and then final movement just to pair with that day as you can see you've got an upper Upper, uh, upper body movement and a lower body movement the lower body was basically a uh, single leg uh, split squats but we started in an elevated position reason being we just want to develop a little bit more hip mobility but also single leg works you know what you'll find is due to you spent a lot of time maybe in uh, the base of support when you're sort of um sparring with your opponent decide on who's going to take card or whether you're going to take card or um, try and pass someone's guard. Um, you might spend a lot of time on single leg work during sort of takedowns and stuff. So you got to make sure you can produce force for that takedown when you've got single leg work involved. Again, we progressed throughout that continuum from strength to moving heavy loads fast and eventually jumping with some split squats. And if we've got that baseline, that is. So that was day two. 
um, what we included in the warm up, what me and Tor sort of discussed about, was just adding plyometrics into the warm ups just to teach a baseline. Because what you don't want to do is, or what we didn't want to do is build all of this, and then when you eventually get to a point where we can start including some sort of fast movements, we've had no practice and no baseline, and we might not even know if Mario and Ty can actually jump and land properly. So what we started to do is incorporate uh, after the warm ups is just short, simple sets of um progression with plyometric movements so we focused a lot on um, half kneeling um, med ball throws you might spend a lot of time in that base sort of position or half kneeling position in jiu-jitsu um, we spent a lot of time on rotational med ball slams rotation is a massive part in the sport we spent a lot of time moving through rotation and, and rolling um, med ball chest passes so you might uh, be a point in jiu-jitsu or sparring when you have to hip escape and push your opponent off um, and then jump on a landing and um, just basic progressions of uh, getting to plyometrics for sort of drop jumps, depth jumps, hurdle jumps. We just want to develop that um, ability to produce force but also to um, land safely. So that was included after a warm up, just make sure you got a pretty decent warm up in there and including all the accessory stuff. Um, this was performed on a Tuesday and a Thursday, so Mario and Ty got in two days around their sport to jiu-jitsu. All of this stuff might not have been performed depending on how they feel, so that's where, again, talk about the auto-regulation. If we wanted to do, say, um, we were going heavy on week two with four sets of five and, say, um, maybe the we're doing arm, uh, wrist locks or foot locks, and you might be a little bit sort of uh, fatigued from the earlier session where they rolled in the morning, then we might have to sort of change that up. So that's what we went for. Um, again, that was the, that's the simple strength work, the way we've sort of laid it out. We've then moved into maybe what would, might be left for that session. So our focus was to develop strength and structure and maybe power and speed overall the, the next couple of months. If there was any spare time, we just got a little bit of short condition in there because remember what we want what we don't want to do is affect the adaptation based off the strength so if we've done all this strength work and then we perform like a 30 minute sort of assault bite workout you're gonna um, definitely affect the, the 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 adaptation you're gonna get from that strength because first you, you're applying sort of a strength and power adaptation so your body's like okay let's develop this and next minute you're bang straight into conditioning so that's where concurrent training comes in. If you're not familiar with it, have a little read up on it. Um, basically, I mean, if you're an athlete, it's it, you could probably do it. But general population, it's quite hard because life gets in the way, work gets in the way. So they want you to try and separate your strength from your condition roughly by around six to seven hours. But we know that sometimes life gets in the way and that's not possible. So on the conditioning days, we tend to uh, to keep, keep keep it quite short. What we involved is things that we thought were carrying over with the sport. So uh, kettlebell swings to try and basically uh, improve the ability for Mario and Ty to, perf uh, to perform high intensity efforts consistently. Um, so have you got simple maybe five to ten minutes? So we kept it on the lower end because Jiu Jitsu is mostly five minute rounds. Um, Kettlebell arm wrap or kettlebell swing arm wraps, uh, single arm swings, uh, double arm swings, hinges, presses, pulls, pulls. We've done all of them, so it might be rows and then five minutes. Just to accumulate some sort of um, general fatigue that you might feel during the competition. This way, you're going to develop that condition to try and withstand that fatigue. So, build on a little sort of buffer to eventually um, carry over into that competition. The majority of the focus, though was that was involved maybe a couple of times but carries were definitely the biggest part and this is where we developed the condition because we wanted to de develop sort of structural conditioner so Mario and Ty could actually hold maybe positions better in the sport they could withstand sort of get pulled into positions and they had solid conditioning for that so we decided me and Tor that uh, carries were going to be the best bet during that conditioner so simple sort of split we have a lateral carry on day one, so that could be a simple one as a suitcase carry, just to challenge that sort of frontal plane movement. Yeah. And then an anterior core 
So that could be as simple as a hard style plank or a weighted plank. Um, day sort of uh, one, sorry, day one. Sorry, that was a lateral core and anterior. Yeah, lateral carry and anterior core, so day one, and then day two was a uh, anterior carry, so that could be as simple as a, a sandbag carry, um, and a lateral core. So we just oppose them in the opposite direction. Lateral core could be simple as side plank rotations or a side plank. So you want to challenge um, them isometric holds because you could be at a point where you're uh, in guard with someone holding that position, and basically the first person who breaks is someone who maybe. It could be strength, but it could also be conditioning based on how long you can hold that position for or can you get out of that position. So things like long carries for distance, um, lateral carries, uh, anterior carries, definitely going to play a big part carrying over to a jiu-jitsu performance massively. So that was sort of the split. Um, in a say a brief summary, it took about 20 minutes, basically using the outline of working our way back of some January to August. We then worked on what we're actually going to go for in terms of simple strength. Simple strength is maybe three sets of five, four sets of five. Um, and then the exercise pool, the reasons why we chose them, um, what we chose them for, and then some accessory work based around it. As I say, the biggest part of this is going to be auto-regulation. Because you might come in on a day like I've mentioned and the athletes might be feeling a little bit run down. So for you to perform exactly what's on the board might not be applicable. So you need to have maybe a plan B or C to go off. And sometimes you need to have that sort of coach's decision to go, do you know what? Today might just be a movement and mobility day. It might not be the right time to work on strength and stuff. And that's fine. Because what you'll find is you can still develop because the days that they are pushing in the jiu-jitsu and they're going sort of maybe light and moderate in their strength work. This is going to allow them to push on the days where they can actually push on their strength work. So you're probably going to get a lot more out of them in the long run. So, cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, if you've got any questions about this, send them over. If you want a discussion about this and maybe have a little talk about maybe where what you would add and what you would change, hit me up. I'm always good to uh, talk about a little bit more in depth with this stuff so hit me up hit tour up and um, i hope you enjoyed the video